user with n with no permission. Now what's interesting about this is this particular tool is now going to go to the access control list for that particular file when I say yes and it's now going to write to the access control list that it has now has no permissions for everyone. It eliminated every other user that was tied to that file in the access control list. Now if I run this again and I try to look at that file and I want to look at the specific permissions you'll see uh, that it says that the permissions are everyone colon n which means none. So we, we can't stop there obviously there's other files in here that we have some problems with such as this one right here this jm G-U-L-B-E-N and this one right here. Uh, let's go and uh, cackles those as well using the bots technique. Uh, we got uh, JM, there it is, forward slash P, everyone, no permissions, and we're going to overwrite all the permissions. The next file that we're interested in here is the RUU, there it is, forward slash P, everyone, none. Am I sure? Yes I am. Alright, so at this point what we've done is we've now uh, eliminated uh, three access control lists on these files. So we basically made these files so that if they try to run on the next reboot, that's it. They're not going to do it. Now we should make a really quick scan through this system and make sure that there's nothing else that we're missing. Um, so far so good. We can disable services like this if we want to but they look pretty uh, safe and as you can tell some of them they actually restart on their own. Um, there's a quicker way to or a more effective way of disabling services that's out of the scope of this video. Uh, generally speaking um, I've already gone through these so we should be in pretty good uh, shape. One of the really uh, difficult uh, things to deal with too is this little winlogon.exe file. Um, a very important file, never touch that file, but it seems that a lot of spyware and viruses nowadays are actually piggybacking on the win logon file, which is initialized as Windows actually is booting up and, and uh, loading into Windows, but that's a different topic for a different day. At this point, let's try something a little bit interesting here. First of all, let's kill Explorer. Looks like I missed another file there, but let's just kill this first of all. All right. And yes, you can kill Explorer, and I know that it's scary because your start button disappears, but don't worry about it. We can even see that this particular file is being hooked by uh, processes such as the, the software I'm using. I'll talk about this in a second, how we overcome that. Uh, let's kill this run DLL32 and see if it loads back up. It didn't. Now let's see if we get a warning. Uh, what's interesting is that a lot of software, a lot of spyware nowadays will cycle through and every few minutes give you a, an error message. Um, if you if you kill the process that it's dependent on and in this particular case it looks like we've done pretty good uh, now typically um, we want to run or what we'd like to run right now is we'd like to run the hijack this now what you're gonna notice here is that I'm going to run this particular file from the run prompt within Process Explorer. And the reason why I'm going to do that is I don't want to load Explorer again. I don't want that those particular DLLs to reload. So let's open this up and let's do a system scan and take a look and see what we've got in here. So we can see that this particular file, the xxwwt.dll, is a browser helper object. So this means that if we, if I didn't cackles it the way that I did these three particular files, um, I could disable them potentially from something like the command or, or the recovery console. Uh, but when I rebooted it back up, it doesn't necessarily mean that those files are going to uh, not load. So let's eliminate these three. I'm going to check these to get them out of there. I see a lot of Google stuff. I see that I've got um, a lot of other stuff that I'm allowing to load. I'm going to get rid of, just clean this up a little bit for stuff that I don't want loading. Uh, you notice here's our little run DLL file. And you might notice that uh, in some situations that there's actually different file names in here that we are going to have to look into. So before I go anywhere else, I just want to quickly oops, go back over here to the GDCN. GDC and there's that file. I'm going to say user permissions everyone oops no 
None? Okay, good. Now this is important to do this before we restart because uh, just by eliminating this from this list, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something not running in the background that could actually rename it or insert this other entry in here uh, on reboot. Now obviously there's probably lots of questions in your mind as we're going through this as to what exactly I'm doing and how I'm doing it, but this is just a short video to show you that this can be done. Um, all right, so everything else looks pretty good. I'm going to see if I can fix these particular uh, instances of problems that we found. Now let's rescan. Uh, we always rescan because, uh, as most technicians would know, is that if you scan once and you remove stuff from Hijack This and rescan again, you can see other stuff will eventually appear. And uh, other stuff may appear actually right away. And that's why at the very end of this bots technique, uh, there's something important that we must do. It'll probably be a little bit surprising to some of you. Um, so looking through this list, it looks pretty good right now. I don't see anything in here that's of uh, major concern, at least not right now. Uh, and we're almost ready to move through the process of a reboot. Now I'm just going to take another quick scan and make sure there's no DLLs here that are hooked by any processes that we need to worry about. And as I said, you can always uh, do a, a little bit of research on these. If you don't know what the files are, just Google it. Search it online, a right click and a search. And by the way, when you first open up Sys Internals um, Process Explorer, you're uh, going to have to look at the view of DLLs in the lower pane view, not handles. There's a difference between the two. And we're not really interested in the handles. We're more interested in the DLLs, at least for the technique that I'm showing you. All right. So it looks pretty darn good in here. Um, we're, we look like we're in pretty good shape. Um, I'm not going to get into a big discussion about everything that we've done, but I do have to take you to the next step now. Now, one of the interesting things is that when you go and initiate a shutdown in Windows, uh, that shutdown um, can initiate other pieces of uh, spywares, uh, spyware or files that are currently running in the background to actually set something else up differently than what we've worked on. And that's why the end part of this video is going to be so interesting is because what we don't want to do is restart your system by going um, start shut down. As a matter of fact, we don't even want to load explorer.exe yet. What we want to do at this point is we want to turn off the computer cold. Yes, you heard me right. That means unplugging from the wall, pressing the power button, hitting the reset button, whatever it is, and start it cold. Um, you can cause some problems in a computer, and you know but from best practices you're not supposed to do this, but from a really nasty little variant such as this one we're dealing with, it's the only way to get around. So at this point, I am going to shut the computer off cold, and then I'll wrap up the video on the reboot. All right, so I've rebooted the system now, and the next step is to actually take a look at the processes that are running and see if there's anything else that we missed. So I'm going to start at the very bottom here. I'm going to work my way up, and I'm looking at the DLLs in the bottom screen. Make sure that nothing has reloaded itself. The most important file I think to look at is usually going to be explorer.exe. That's where a lot of stuff likes to hide out. Okay, we look good. So that's it. That is basically a rundown of how to actually remove viruses, spyware, and malware manually. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time on this video for the fact that I don't know if it's going to be useful for anyone. If it is useful, you need to email me, and you need to tell me that it was useful, and you need to ask me other questions that you want answered. To email me, send an email.